Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 2 Thoughts. This episode is called Meet the New Boss. Another episode I love, like most MCU things. Uh, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything that came out after this episode first premiered. That's MCU at least. And yeah, let's dive right in. So, let's see. The, I like the Schrodinger's cat joke. And, yeah, Fitz says, you know, oh, I feel like a, a blacksmith poking at a, at a Tesla. Because this was back when Tesla was not a dirty word. You know, before Elon completely flushed his reputation down the toilet. And... Let's see. Yeah, uh, I like when May and, and Coulson are talking about the new boss before meeting him and Daisy confronts uh, Robbie which is yeah love all the the code speak that yeah you know the she you know she acts like oh we we go way back what she's really saying is I've done my homework on you you know and and you know, he's trying to get her out of there. She she breaks the engine with her powers, which later she comes to regret. It's like, should have let him fix it. Should, yeah. And, yeah, we meet the new boss, Jeffrey Mace. And it's one of those things where, like, you know, he's very... He's nice. And that almost makes it worse when you don't like him. Because if he was just an a-hole, it would be like, of course I don't like him, he's an a-hole. But no, it's like, oh, he's being so nice. He's being so agreeable. And... Yeah, always fun when Fitzsimmons is talking science and Mac is like, can you, can you dumb it down a shade, please? I'm trying to follow along here. And let's see. Yeah. Um the the ghost uh now I'm still not entirely sure what the character's name is. Yeah, um but yeah, that first ghost that we've been seeing manages to free Hugo, and where Hugo I go, and, you know, tells him, you know, we've been gone for years. And, yeah, I appreciate that, you know, Robbie, you know, explains he's not an inhuman. It's perfectly understandable that everyone keeps, you know, ev everyone's first guess is, oh, this is another inhuman. I'm I'm glad that they didn't limit themselves to doing stories about Inhumans, and yeah, very cool rematch. You know, he he first it's like a wrench, and then he grabs like part of a, a car to you know sets them on fire and attacks her with, and she knocks over a car almost onto him. He just barely gets uh, yeah, very cool. And, yeah, Chen panics, saying they're everywhere. And, like, does the... Hollywood loves that move. When when a mentally unstable character, like, hits their head against a mirror or glass or something, drawing a lot of blood. And the dark hold is mentioned. Holy crap, literally. I cannot wait to see where this is going, because that's... That's not small that's not wow yeah and yeah um daisy manages to get out of the chair and jumps onto the car as one does and you know once they're in the the darkness reyes you know activates a little of the ghost rider power gets the the top part on on fire and does manage to to you know get her off the the roof with with that we have another shotgun axe. And yeah, May is really panicking. 
uh, Coulson tries to, to talk her down, get her into the lab, not realizing, you know, yeah, this is, I, it, it seemed like a, a good idea at the time. You can understand where he's he's coming from. Really cool fight scene as she, you know, fights off everyone, which is just like, I appreciate how, how the writers keep finding ways for Melinda May to end up, like, outnumbered and, you know, really kicking ass despite that. Like, it's pretty clear. There's, you know, in the show Bible, like, perhaps the first commandment, thou shalt contrive reasons for Melinda May to kick ass. And, yeah, we see that Jeffrey is inhuman and he's got super strength as well as superhuman, like, you know, he can, um, in endure, endurance? No, like, yeah, he can, he can really take a punch. Which, you know, if you've got super strength, you're probably not very much use if you, you know, you can't lift something really heavy if your muscles can't take that extra pressure, so. And, yeah, the, um, let's see, yeah, uh, Daisy, oh, right, yeah, yeah, very cool when, when Ghost Rider takes care of the, the ghost which is also clever, because, cause, yeah, you know, that's, like, he burns the soul, not, he doesn't need the corporeal form there in order to, to kill someone. Or, I guess in this case, send them to hell. I mean, they always go to hell when he kills them. But I guess this guy is technically already dead, but, yeah, you know. But, but yeah, um, Daisy, Fitz, and Mac talk about Ghost Rider... And, yeah, Mac realizes, you know, Yo-Yo has been working with Daisy. That's why the supply is always low of the painkiller, uh, not painkiller, bone healing drug. And, yeah, neither Mac nor Fitz are particularly happy to learn this. So, yeah, we, you know, this is very early in the season. I haven't watched past this, but I can imagine, like, over the course, maybe not this season, but over the course of the rest of the show, I could imagine that this will heal, but this is them saying, you know, this is not nothing, you know, this is not something you just shrug off, you know, her, like, they do feel like she turned her back on them, like she abandoned them. Mace's joke about, you know, the climate change accord is not enforceable. Yeah, it's funny because it's true. And, yeah, Mace, you know, is not going to tell Coulson what he's doing with, with May. It's classified. And in the post credits scene, yeah, and, and also, like, really devastating seeing May, you know, strapped down and really, like horrified, really, you know, yeah, trying to get free. And then, yeah, the post credits is Robbie, you know, saying, you were wondering about what connected all this? Yeah, sorry about your car. It might be me, you know. It's, yeah, very, very cool. Really looking forward to seeing what happens next there. And I just, you know... I kept thinking, I've seen Gabriel Luna before, he played the Terminator in Terminator Dark Fate, so, yeah, um, he's incredibly cool in, in both of these roles, so, yeah, really, really glad to be seeing him in, in something else, so just, yeah, he, he was, he was so freaking good, like, there's a lot of problems with that movie, he is not one of them. So, uh, IMDb trivia for this episode, and, oh, okay, so in the, in the Marvel mainstream continuity, Jeffrey Mace is known as, is this Patrio, I'm guessing Patriot, a non-augmented human but very capable fighter. The third Captain America held the role longer than Steve Rogers before Rogers was found in the ice and the uncle of General Thaddeus Ross. And 
Huh. This is the second comic book character Jason O'Mara has played. He voices Bruce Wayne slash Batman in six DC animated movies. The title is half of the well-known expression, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. The title of this episode is a lyric from the song Won't Get Fooled Again by The Who. And... Okay, so there's a... Uh, hmm. Yeah, this is this is backstory that might come up in a later character. Right, yeah. When Fitz is talking about the ghost, he mentions Tobias Ford, a similar ghost-like character in an earlier episode. Oh, right, way back, yeah. Uh, season 1, episode 9, episode repairs. Um, let's see... Right, so, yeah, uh, Jeff Mace in the comics been around since 1941, but in 76, Marvel reeled via retroactive continuity, a retcon that Mace had become the third Captain America sometime after his World War II era adventures in the comics. He has no superpowers, but it is an incredible hand-to-hand -hand combatant. In this episode, he says he's an inhuman with enhanced strength, some level in vulnerability, so the show tailored this character to fit the Inhumans mythology of the show and huh. fair enough um, there's a factual error in this one after a fight Robbie Reyes tells Daisy her arm is fractured not broken although the two terms are often thought of as different by the layman they actually mean the same thing if her arm was fractured it was indeed broken and see yeah the the um, I I like when when Robbie points out you know Daisy says threaten me all you want you think I'm afraid to die and he says I think you want it and let's see now we <laughs> Yeah, I like that, you know, Phil is starting on this big speech. And, you know, Mace is like, Phil, it's okay. She was your friend. Loyalty is a good thing. But I, ho I had a whole speech ready. I'm sure it's good. Use it next time. <laughs> because there is going to be a next time. And it's going to be so similar that the speech is going to work for that one as well. You know, he he's not like, I'm I'm firing you. This can't happen again. He's like... I mean, let's just, let's, let's set the clocks and, and yeah, eventually this is going to happen again. <laughs> and Fitz says, cue Gemma gasping, and then she gasps. That was, that was pretty funny. Let's see. <laughs> I like when Fitz says, you're an engineer, Mac, and a small tank. And, yeah, when, when Fitz points out the place is creepy, and Mac says, you ever notice we never get to check up on like a brightly lit place filled with nice friendly people 